of God's grace and glory and realms of manifestation. God is looking for us to increase, but it's going to come through proper discipleship. And God didn't just increase. He didn't just become bigger and expand and become better and become something all in itself. He increased in some areas. And the first area was wisdom. Say wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom is God showing us practical skill and intellect. God giving us insight and acumen or expertise. It's God showing us that there is a discernment that's penetrating and God wants to give each one of us clear vision. Say clear vision. Wouldn't it be nice to wake up and know what your day is going to be like before you got to deal with your day? The Bible says he doeth nothing lest he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. There is a way to understand what you're going to have to go through and what you're going to have to deal with if you would just tap into the wisdom of God. But that's going to come through worship and discipline. James chapter 3 verses 13 through 18 says it like this. And uh, I'm going to read this from the Amplified uh, version. It, it simply says, who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Then let him by his noble living show forth his good works with the unobtrusive humility, which is the proper attribute of true wisdom. See, people who are wise are humble. Normally, people who are arrogant are trying to disguise where they're not wise. Uh, the, the, the true test of real wisdom is humility verse 14 but if you have bitter jealousy envy and contention rivalry and selfish ambition in your hearts do not pride yourselves on it and thus be in defiance of false and uh, in defiance of and false to the truth number uh, verse 14 shows us the other problem that we have is that we're not honest about our jealousy our rivalry and our selfish ambition if we would be honest when that stuff come up in us and we bring it to the altar then God could deal with it but we try to be spiritual and act like it don't exist only competition you're supposed to be in is your fight against the devil. You, you, we, we're in rivalry with one another, and it causes us, you know, uh, first of all, we try to act like our life is better than somebody else's. Amen. Every life has its challenges. So verse 15 says, this superficial wisdom is not such as comes down from above, but it's earthly unspiritual uh, the amplified called it animal even devilish and I learned a new word the other day demoniacal I said now surely I've always thought that said demonic I didn't know it said demoniacal and surely it is a word it means to have direct influence from demonic activity That means you have been allowing yourself to be ministered to by earthly, sensual, demonic stuff to where it's done tricked you into becoming wise according to it. So verse 16 says, for wherever there is jealousy or envy and contention, rivalry and selfish ambition, somebody say my motives, my motives. There will also be, here's, here's, why we, here's why we're so frustrated. Here's why we deal with stuff so bad. Because of those things, there will also be confusion, unrest, disharmony, and rebellion. And all sorts of evil and vile practices. Now, listen, somebody say practices. Now, we're talking about evil that you do and then evil that people do to you. Okay? But we're not talking about abuses. We're talking about practices. There's a difference between being abused and then you have to deal with evil because of your practice. Are y'all with me? I was speaking to a young lady on the phone and the young lady said uh, she wasn't happy. And uh, I said, uh, because of what I know, I said, well, I'm sure you're not. And uh, we went on to talk and I said, well, how long are you going to let him hit you and think that that's okay? I said, you know, that's abuse. 
And she said, I ain't talking about that. So I'm on the phone like, well, what? What you talking about? And God immediately ministered to me. It ain't abuse because she's walking in that fighting. That's what she's become familiar with. That's where she is comfortable. That's what ministers to her about his love for her. It's devilish. So because he swings, it tells her that it concerns him so much, so that's love. Slap three people and say that's a lie. So now, my mind shifted and realized she don't need Artemis House. She needs a psychologist. Because Artemis House is for abuse of what you're trying to escape. A psychologist helps you change your practice of the evil that you've become comfortable and familiar with. Most of us are putting up with stuff in our lives from the devil, not because he's abusing us, but because this is the ramification of our practices. It stops if you stop getting comfortable with it. Verse 17 simply says, but the wisdom from above is first all pure, undefiled, then it's peace-loving, courteous, considerate, gentle. It is willing to yield to reason, full of compassion, good fruits. It is wholehearted and straightforward, impartial, unfeigned, free from doubts, wavering, and insincerity. And the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will in thought and deed, is the fruit of the seed sown in peace by those who work for and make peace in themselves and in others. That peace which means concord, agreement, and harmony between individuals with undisturbed, undisturbedness in a peaceful mind free from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. God wants to give us wisdom that will give us peace. See, because my mother says sometimes it ain't what you can do about it, it's what you know about it. And there are just some things you can't do nothing about, but the wisdom concerning it can give you peace. And so God wants us to be free from what agitates and give us conflict. And so he's increasing our wisdom. All right. So uh, because uh, of the time, I, I'm not going to go any further. But I do believe that. Uh, come on. I do believe that uh, God is trying to speak to us as it relates to wisdom. Now, there's only one place to get wisdom, and you get wisdom from the Word of God. And you get wisdom from people who are following the Word of God. I think one of the things that we have to do sometimes uh, in order to be filled with wisdom is we've got to get rid of some of the ignorance that's already occupying space in our mind. One of the things that we learn about God's fight with the children of Israel as they go into land that God had already given them to conquer, the first thing that they did was not to possess the land. The first thing they had to do was dispossess the enemy from the land. And so you've got some stuff. I've got some stuff. We've got some stuff in us that is occupying space where God wants wisdom to occupy. God wants his way and his will to have residence in our hearts and our minds. And we all know that we've got our own ambition. We've got our own selfishness. And we've got envy and strife and contention. And we've got rivalry sitting there where God wants to give us wisdom so that we can please him. Amen. Come on. And so today, I, I want to pray for people that know they got stuff in the way of wisdom. I want to pray for that thing to be dispossessed from you. Because it's occupying territory that God wants to occupy. Not that you don't love God. You love God. But you've been filled with so much other stuff. Some of y'all spend more time reading book like Chicken Soup for the Soul. 
than you do the word of God. Believing that non-believers have good intuition that can bless your life. Since we're at the potter's house, look at your neighbor and say, now that's ignorant, now that's ignorant, now that's ignorant. Some of you are reading books about motivation and books about leadership and books about skill sets and change and don't read your Bible. The world teaches ambition. And God just said that that selfish ambition is wrong. Ambition will make you do anything to accomplish your goal. But what if your ambition doesn't have anything to do with the will of God? I know some people can't handle that because that's the way you were raised and that's the way things happen and your life seemed to be all right. But it's still wrong. I don't give a flip. What is the profit of man to gain the whole world? and lose his soul. That lets us know that some of the things that we've been after haven't had anything to do with God and it's caused some of our own frustrations unknowingly. I know a lot of people won't tell you to watch the books that you read just because they seem like they want to help you with upward mobility. It ain't about what you get. Sometimes it's about how you got it. That verse in Proverbs says that every man has a plan for his life. We got some stuff that we figured out that's supposed to work, but only what God's counsel says is going to stand. And so my prayer today isn't just so that you get smarter or wiser or that you have complete insight or vision today. My prayer today is the stuff that is causing irritation that you don't even know that it's causing it and it's in the way of the wisdom of God that you want it gone as of today if that's you then come to the altar now be careful because if that's not you God will begin to do something and it's going to frustrate you because here here are some things that you've lived by in some cases here are some things that have appeared to be fruitful in other cases. But they're not God. And God's going to begin to shed light that that ain't me. That was a self-help book. That was somebody else that don't love me. Because you have to know that the enemy has to bring reward too in order to have his own disciples. He's an imitator of God. Whenever God going to give you something, the enemy tries to bring you something to force you to have to choose it. And I'm not that deep. I'm not going to try to prophesy what the will of the Lord is for you. That's between you and God. But what I do want to do is I want to pray that you can see it and that God will give you penetratable discernment that when the enemy tries to bring something your way, you can see past that foolishness right there. Because the Bible says he comes. Listen, he don't come with a fork and horns and raggedy teeth and wretched and smelling all the time. The Bible says sometimes he comes as an angel of life. It looked like God. Feel like God. He sound like God. But it ain't God. It's more devil than the last choice you made. And so sometimes, my bishop says, he tries to rid himself of his desires. So that when desire comes, he know that was God. So what we want to do is we want to empty ourselves of the way we want it. And how we think it ought to be. And then Lord, you speak to me. You fill me up. I heard somebody say, we come empty. And then we ask God to fill us up. Every day, you want to empty yourself in worship. And then allow God to fill you back up. Whatever was good will come back. Because every good and perfect gift, it comes from God. And so that's our prayer. If you're behind someone, touch someone in front of you. Just as an act of connection. And so, Father, we just thank you. And we bless you. 
Lord, you said as the priest, if I would raise my right hand according to your word, that you would not only endorse it, but you would empower it. This act of agreement, God, is coming to dispossess every enemy that's in our minds and in our hearts. Anything that would attempt to frustrate and irritate your wisdom. Wisdom that you're releasing. Wisdom that is fruitable. Wisdom that's free of jealousy and envy and rivalry and self-ambition. That there'll be no strife and contention in our hearts concerning whatever it is that you want from, for us. That we might be responsible in our participation with you to give you what you want from us. We love you, sir. And sometimes we struggle. But thank God for Jesus Christ. We love God's commands. But sometimes there's a part of us that don't want to participate with following you. But on today, the enemy of confusion, the enemy of self-ambition, the enemy of our own private aspirations that would get in the way of your plan and your counsel. We dispossess it. We release it. We disconnect ourselves from it. And we'll allow you to minister to us goals and plans and hopes and dreams. As of today, we are careful of the dreams that we've caused ourselves to dream. And we simply want to hear from you. Roll out your plan before us, God. Speak prophetically before us if you have to. Help us to receive confirmation. But ultimately, Holy Ghost, speak to me. Speak to us. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal our plans to us. And we'll be grateful. We'll be thankful. Even if it seems opposite of the stuff that we've had on our own itinerary. We're going to trust you because you're God. We're going to pull down dates and time slots. We're going to get away, rid of calendars. And, and we're going to take you out of boxes. And quit putting timetables on you. And trust you for what you say. We want real wisdom. That's from above. Increase us through our submission. Increase us through our discipline. Increase us through our accountability. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive that, just give God some praise right there. Give God some praise right there. Hug somebody and tell them it might not be easy, but it's going to be right. Tell them it might not be easy, but it's going to be right. It's going to be right when it's God. It might not be easy. But it's going to be right. All right. Greeters, let's move quickly. If you're in the back, if people have to go, be prepared to receive the offering. If you're going to give with us corporately, let's get our tithe and our offering in our hand. Let's get it ready. Amen. That's good. Sing that out loud. Come on. Yeah, that's good.